Hello everyone and welcome to Group Work 6. We're continuing on with the theme of measures and we'll just run through our objectives as usual just to make crystal clear what's coming up and what's expected of us. So creating measures is achieved from the Power Pivot tab whilst we're in the Excel window as opposed to the Data Model window in Power Pivot. We access the measure editor and whilst creating and defining our measures, we have an opportunity for formatting. And we're going to have a look at tidying up the measures that we've created already. In group work five, we did create some measures in the calculation area, but that was really for practice. And you may have realized at the time that the, the column choices that we made when defining our measures were probably not your first choice. So we're going to have a look at that. They were really just for practice. So we'll have a look at editing and deleting our measures. And I think as you build on your experience with Power Pivot, it will be in the measure editor that you'll be creating the majority, if not all, of your measures. So we'll get a firm handle on that. So looking forward to taking you through that, guys. And that's coming up next. So see you there. Welcome everybody to Group Work 6 Measures in Excel. I'm currently on page 38 of the user guide. So there's two ways to add measures. From the Power Pivot Data Model window, and we've seen that in Group Work 5 in the calculation area, and from the Power Pivot tab in the calculations group and the measures option, it's a measures drop down. If you're using Excel 2013, it's called the calculated fields drop down. So we're asked to insert a new pivot into a new worksheet. So if you're using 2016, then we can do that directly from the insert tab. If you're using any other version, then you'll have to do it from the power pivot window and select the pivot table option. So we'll choose the default, which is new worksheet. And the first thing to do is to rename the worksheet group work six. While I'm here, I'm going to just move that to the right of practice exercise five. So we're all tidy and ready to go. From the power pivot tab, select the measures drop down. We've got two options here, new measure or manage measures. I'm going to select manage measures. And in the manage measures window, you'll see a list of all of the measures that we created in the calculation area. Now selecting any of them activates the edit option or the delete option. Select the total standard cost and we're going to edit that. And here it is, guys. Here's the measure editor. I'll just call it editor from now on, okay? So starting at the top, we've got the table name and all of our measures were created in the sales table. Now we can select the drop down, and all of the available tables are here. And this is the first thing you'll do when you'll create a new measure is select the table where you want it to appear and it will appear in the calculation area of that table. So any measure that you create here, you select the table where you want it to appear and it will appear in the calculation area. As normal, we give the measure a descriptive and explanatory name for easy identification, but there's no colon or equal sign required here. That's only in the calculation area. So no, just a nice descriptive name for the measure here. Description is completely up to you. It's not mandatory, it's not required. And it's here where all the fun begins. It's where we start with an equal sign, our function and the rest of the DAX expression. We use exactly the same syntax as we would if we were creating it in the data model. And then below we've got our formatting options. We can select currency, decimal numbers, whole numbers, percentages, etc. And our decimal places and the thousand separator if we're using whole numbers, etc. 
I'm just going to click cancel to return to the manage measures editor. I'm going to select again total standard cost but this time I'm just going to delete it. As you'd expect there's a warning do you want to do this? Yes we do and we'll get another message here and this is because total standard cost is a measure that is being used within another measure. We're just going to click on OK and to highlight what's going on there we'll go back to the manage data model window and on the sales table we've got a warning and a couple of errors here. So total standard cost was part of the gross profit measure. By deleting it we're going to have an effect on the gross profit and similarly for profit it's part of the profit percent measure. Profit percent is reliant or dependent on total standard cost so deleting that measure has a direct effect on two others. So we're just going to select it and click delete on the keyboard and I'm just going to return to the Excel window because it seems that it's stuck but in actual fact it's because we have to OK another message to say OK to agree to deleting that measure. So let's return, click on gross profit. You can right click as well and just delete that and delete it permanently from the, from the model. So just to recap there for you guys, what happened there? We deleted a measure but it just seemed to have hung. Then I noticed on the, on the taskbar down here that that was flashing, my icon was flashing, so I just returned to the Excel window and we had that error message and we just had to OK that. Then I just returned back to the model window and just deleted the, the gross profit percent. Chaps, that ugly black box that I was experiencing in the power pivot window, uh, that happens to me sometimes and I know that if I just close the power pivot window down, click on manage again, it goes. I, I don't know what that is or whether it's just that it affects me, um, but that's how I've gotten rid of it. So back on page 39 of the user guide, we're going to create some measures now in the editor. So I'm going to return to GW6 and I've got my empty pivot table. And from the power pivot tab, just click on measures and new measure. I'm just going to cancel out of that just so you can get your bearings a little bit here. If you select manage measures you get a list of the measures existing that we can select any of them and edit or delete directly from here or we can just click new. The first thing that we have to do is select the table that the measure will reside in and it will be in the sales table. I'm just going to select and drag backwards to select measure one and provide a nice descriptive name which is going to be total product cost. No colon or equal sign required. I'm going to leave the description blank and the formula area provides the equal sign for us and it will be a sum and again IntelliSense kicks in, there's really no difference and we'll use the tab key to select that and it provides the opening parenthesis for us and it's in the sales table and we want product standard cost and tab. So before I enter the closing, the required closing parenthesis, I'm going to check formula and see what this does for us. And it gives us a warning that the expression is not valid or appears to be incomplete. Please review and correct the expression. The end of the input was reached. And in English, that means that the closing parenthesis is missing. So we'll put in the closing, the required closing parenthesis, click on check formula again and perfect. I rely heavily on this little tool and I urge you to get into the habit of, of using it as well. It really is brilliant. A good little aid. And then finally down here in under formatting options if we just select currency and again as, as you would expect you've got all your currencies here. And we've got zero decimal places and we just click on OK and that is our measure 
created. We have to close the Manage Measures window as well and just click on Close. That's only because we went through this window in order to open the editor window itself. So we created that in the sales table and if we need proof then we just go back to the data model window and there it is guys. So selecting that drop down to provide a location for your measures it really does work there it is there. So if we go back and you had forgotten to provide a location or just left it at the default then if we go back to manage measures and total product cost edit so if this was wrong say you'd put it in products then you can just change let's do that let's put it into products click on close return to the model it's gone from sales and now it resides in products so really easy guys I do it a lot in actual fact I get a bit carried away and forget sometimes but it's dead easy just to change locations and why that's significant is because in the pivot table field list you can locate your measures easily so get into the habit of putting your measures in the the correct table so let's create a new measure called product cost increase so we'll click measure and this time we'll just go to new measure so really important we want it in the sales table and the name is product cost increase you can tab through the fields if you prefer and again we saw earlier on if we had a tax hike or something like that in this scenario we're going to have an increase in manufacturing of 10% just to show you how easy it is to use base measures to create other measures so we're going to insert total product cost there it is there press tab and then we're going to multiply that by 1% so the last time it was the whole amount plus 10%. This time we just want to see the 10% increase, hence the 0 0.1. And again, it's going to be currency with zero decimal places and click on OK. So as you would expect, it's 10% of the total product cost. It's looking good. And then we're asked to place the all products hierarchy in the rows drop zone. So products table, all products into rows. Our pivots coming to life. We want to create a new measure so again measures new measure select our destination tables the sales table go to provide a descriptive name of project projected product cost and we're adding these two measures together so total product cost there it is and tab and addition and product first one in the list and again the sigma symbol tells us it's a measure so product cost increase now we don't need any closing parentheses or anything so we can check formula make sure it's okay and it's currency again zero decimal places and click on okay this happens to me a lot as well that it flips back to the data model and I have to click back into to Excel. If it happens to you, it happens to me, guys. I don't know if it's just my system or it, it's just a, a feature. So we've created three new measures. We deleted the old ones that we created in the, the calculation area, and it was all via the measures drop down. And as I said earlier, I think you'll probably find yourselves using this an awful lot. And again, if you're using 2010, it will be calculated fields that you'll see on this button instead of measures but it does the same job and it looks very very similar okay so there's our hierarchy there's our three new fields guys working brilliantly we know now from the pivot table tools contextual that we can take subtotals off and things if, if it gets a little bit cluttered so save your work good job I hope you're beginning to feel the bug for this, not literally, that it's motivating you to find out more and more about Power Pivot. And we've only just touched the surface. It's got a lot of power behind it. 
and we're building on our knowledge here and it's just small steps but we're getting there guys so have a look at the practice exercise on page 41 and you'll be creating a few new measures of your own and then I'll see you in the practice solutions so have a go guys if you get it wrong what's the worst that can happen don't worry just keep at it just take your time you'll get there and I'll see you in the solutions.